Hello my dear students. In the previous classes, we have already discussed about pesticide pollution. Today, we will discuss about endosulfan disaster in Kerala. Endosulfan is a widely used organochlorine insecticide and acaticide. It is practically water insoluble but readily adheres to clay particles and persistent in soil and water for several years. Endosulfan is carcinogenic, neurotoxic and genotoxic. That is, it damages DNA. It has been responsible for many severe poisonings and several fatal cases. Symptoms of acute poisoning include hyperactivity, tremors, convulsions, lack of coordination, staggering, difficulty in breathing, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea and in severe cases, unconsciousness. Doses as low as 35 mg per kilogram have been documented to cause death in humans. Then, what are the health impacts of endosulfan? It affects both nervous system and reproductive system, hyperexcitability, tremors, convulsions and death. Puberty delayed in boys, infertility among men, girls attain menstruation early, menstrual disorders are frequent. It has estrogenic effects. Birth defects in offspring of animals ingesting endosulfan during pregnancy. It also affects skin. Farm workers with chronic endosulfan exposure are at risk of rashes and skin irritation. It affects kidneys and liver. It inhibits leukocyte and macrophage migration. It damages RBC. It causes mutation in mammals and may induce mutations. It is also a potential tumor promoter. Then what are the environmental impacts of endosulfan? Endosulfan is an environmental contaminant which is semi-volatile and persistent to degradation processes in the environment. It is subject to long-range atmospheric transport. That is, it can travel long distance from where it is used. Endosulfan has been used in remote locations such as the Arctic Ocean as well as in the Antarctic atmosphere. It also negatively impacts populations of beneficial insects. Then, which countries have banned endosulfan? Because of its threat to human health and the environment, a global ban on the manufacture and use of endosulfan was negotiated under the Stockholm Convention in April 2011. The ban has taken effect in mid-2012 with certain uses exempted for five additional years. More than 80 countries, including the European Union, Australia, New Zealand, several West African nations, the United States, Brazil and Canada had already banned it or announced phase-outs by the time the Stockholm Convention ban was agreed upon. In India, Endosulfan is sold under the brand names of Tynex, Endosil, Phaser, Benzopin, etc. Although classified as a yellow label, that is highly toxic pesticide by the Central Insecticide Board, India is one of the largest producers and the largest consumer of endosulfan in the world. Endosulfan is widely used in most of the plantation crops in India. Since 1976 in Kasargod district, endosulfan was sprayed with the helicopters in the cashew plantations three times every year. The aerial spraying was allegedly undertaken to contain the menace of the T mosquito bug. Just after three years, the ill effects of endosulfan spraying came to notice. As early as 1979, stent growth and deformed limbs were noticed among newborn calves. By 1990s, health disorders of very serious nature among the human population came to the limelight. Children were found to be the worst affected with the congenital anomalies, mental retardation, physical deformities, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, hydrocephalus, etc. Men and women were also affected with various chronic ailments, many irreversible and difficult to treat. There was a high incidence of disorders of the central nervous system, cancer and reproductive disorders. 
From the mid 1990s, the community living near plantation started complaining against the spraying of endosulfan, finally realizing that the pesticide might be the reason behind the anomalies. In 1994, the issue came for to, to public attention and social activists sent complaints to all government officials. In 1998, protest emerged as a mass movement. In 2000, district court banned endosulfan in Kasargod. In 2002, High Court of Kerala banned the use and sale of endosulfan in the state. In 2003, the National Institute of Occupational Health substantiated the health problems. In 2004, the opposition leader, V.S. Achdanandan, deployed his staff to collect available materials and consequences. In 2011, V.S. Achdanandan led mass fast to ban endosulfan completely. The same year, Geneva Conference decided for global ban on May 13, 2011, Supreme Court banned endosulfan. Endosulfan is hard to degrade pesticide which has caused heavy damages to biotic and abiotic factors of Kasargod. Plantation Corporation dared to administrate it on cashew with the mirage of commercial profit. The use of endosulfan gave only a temporary yield but lasted with many congenital abnormalities, neurological disorders, abortions, epilepsy and other diseases which persist for the generation. The government needs to focus more on rehabilitating the victims of endosulfan with health, medical, educational and overall care. And it is the time for all of us to think and act upon for a safer and healthier pest management method. Today we have discussed about endosulfan disaster in Kerala. It is one of the worst pesticide pollution in India. The tragedy of people exposed to pesticide endosulfan in Kasargo district of Kerala is continuing, while incidents of children born with neurobehavioral disorders, congenital malformations and other abnormalities have came down in some of the 11 worst affected panchayat. They continue to occur in other panchayat. So we must use biopesticide instead of chemical pesticides. Thank you.